Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host. My name is Q. We have a returning, recurring guest back on the show. Sir, welcome back. Please introduce yourself. My name is Tavon Casey. Uh, you know, rapper, singer, songwriter. Not really singer, but, you know, I, but I dabble with it a little bit. Hey, he, um, he, puts, he, he puts the vocals down now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. You know, I sound terrible without the auto tune, but I'm good though. A lot of people sound terrible without the auto tune. So you're being <laughs> hum- you came on here being humble and modest. So, uh, Tavon Casey, welcome back. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, since the last time I saw you or we talked, mm-hmm. some things about you changed. You're getting married. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, congratulations. This is the first time I'm like, you know, talking to you face to face kind of oh, yeah. since you've uh since it was announced. So, congratulations. Oh, that's Thank a big you, that's Thank a a much. big deal. Thank you very you, much, man. You know, you definitely invited to the wedding, right? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> nah, well, yeah, bro, you know, I figured why not? You know, you definitely you definitely came through for me a couple times whenever I asked, so you know. Sure. You know, I, I say this to everybody, even if I wasn't, even if we weren't, I always say that we're just happy that you're getting married. Oh, thank you, bro. Much appreciated. It's the people who ask. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I would really appreciate if I was invited to the wedding. Like, I, I always never wanted to be that person. Right. Um, there's people there. There was weddings like um, some years ago. Uh, one of my friends was getting married mm-hmm. and I would have wanted to be there. But I wasn't invited. And I understood. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we're not the closest, but I really like him and his wife. But um, but I, I always resolve to never be the pick me, I want to go to your wedding type right. of person. So right. if it, <laughs> if yeah, I get an invite, beautiful. If not, it is what it is. We're yeah, still that's, happy that's, for you. That's always been one of the worst people to be, in my opinion. Like, you know, I've, it's, it's been times where I wasn't invited to a wedding, but, you know, I still showed up on Zoom. But, you mm-hmm. know, it's different than going to a wedding or doing anything on Zoom compared to doing it in person, you know. But, you know, yeah, like, when it comes to, you know, being invited to different places, doing different things, I don't really hold a grudge if somebody doesn't. You know, I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of a loner anyway. So, Mm -hmm. uh, but if I'm invited, cool. If I'm not, then it it is what it is, you know. Yeah. There was, um, there was a talk, (laughs) there was a talk some years back. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it was a circuit assembly talk. So, um, and, and, uh, brother new was given the talk. It was like the one with the branch representative and he was talking about like forgiveness. And it's always stuck with me because I was dealing with a person. This is before I was married. So I had just gotten out of a relationship with someone who was offended for not being invited somewhere. And I remember telling them, I'm like, well, you have to be forgiving. You know, you have to be forgiving. They didn't invite you. Woo 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 saying all this, just trying to be of consolation to the, to the young lady. And now we're broken up at this point and I'm at this circuit assembly and, uh, the brother was talking about exactly the situation I was in. She was, he was saying, you know, why do you have to be forgiving if you weren't invited somewhere? What did they do right. to you? You just weren't invited. Right, right. <laughs> like it, it <laughs> so that always, always stuck with me. But um, anyway, that's that's a side point. So how does it feel? How does it feel leading up to, you know, getting married? Well, it's definitely an adjustment for sure. Like, uh, you know, when it comes to taking a lead, you know, being ahead of the household, that's something that you're not fully prepared for all the time, you know, so it's like, I'm trying to get as prepared as possible. I don't want to say I'm going to be a hundred percent prepared, you know, like, you know, it's people that's married for 50, 75 years and they, and they still aren't fully adjusted to, you know, the whole marriage. Now, somebody who's logical might say that, okay, if you're married for, for that long, then you should be adjusted to it. But then again, we live in an imperfect world, bro. So, you know, everybody's going to have their own faults. Everybody's going to, 
like you're going to learn something new about your mate every single day like you can be married for 10 years and find out wait you like that in your food like <laughs> you know like literally like you find out new stuff about your mate every single day but i think i found the one for me man we're happy for you man and 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 yeah you're you're gonna learn new stuff every day like <laughs> learning <laughs> speaking from experience Hey, I still don't have it figured out. This is uh, this is our fifth year, so we just okay, uh, yeah, got married in 2018. Oh, um, so wow. this congratulations is congratulations again, bro. Oh uh, well, thank you. I'm still figuring out. All that to say, I'm still figuring out, figuring uh, it out. Uh, so uh, it's right. it's a process. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing, right? Um, and it is to be taken seriously. But you're gonna do great. You're already. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you already got the stature of a man. You tall as heck. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm a. I'm. I'm actually six six. You know, a lot of people might not know. Like a, a lot of people might look at me on Instagram and be like, "Oh, he's pretty tall." Was he like six six one six two? I hear people say that all the time whenever they meet me in person. Like, man, I thought you were like six one. You like a whole five inches taller. You know? <laughs> yeah, this dude is a giant, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro. Like, and and even though you know my height, like, it can still throw somebody off. Like, if they know my height, it can still throw somebody off when they see me in person for the first time. You know, dog. Six six is tall. Like yeah. the six. <laughs> well, you know it. You're six six, but like six six is tall. That's that's Michael Jordan's height for for sure. So are you are you comparing yourself to Jordan? I mean, look, you said it, not me. You know. I, <laughs> Hey, man, look, and even if that was the case, you know, I'll say it in like a super humble way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Tavon Casey Jordan on the show. <laughs> he's back, and he's about to get his first ring, like Jordan. Uh, hey, so, hey, bars. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of bars, uh, the conversation that uh, we're going to have today is, a, is is along those lines. So, I was thinking, um, you know, having my man Tavon Casey back on, it's like, okay, he's somebody who, who knows how to put these words together. He's somebody who even uh, dabbled in putting his vocals down. So I just wanted to have like a loose conversation about lyrics, bars, et cetera. So let me just, let me just start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> now, I think you're, you're a good rapper, and I think you have a niche uh, when it comes to specifically putting what I call together bars, like the metaphors, similes, um, and even piecing them, piecing them up in rhyme patterns. Right. Um, so when you're rapping, and we might have touched on this in our first two episodes, uh, but just to bring us up to date, when you're writing, when you're rapping, what's going through your mind? How are you piecing these things together? Um, just talk about your process a little bit. So my writing process is a little bit different. Like I like to piece stuff to get, like I don't sit in one spot for like a long period of time. Like I suffer from ADD, which if people don't know, that's attention deficit disorder. So it's like, uh, if I'm sitting there thinking about one thing, I can't sit for a long period of time and be focused on one thing. Like, you know, like it, like it'll drive me crazy. So, you know, um, it's, it's always been one of those things of, okay, I'm going to write down a bar and, you know, I'm going to just leave it there and then I'm going to come back to it later. If I think of something else that might relate to that later on, then I'll come back and I'll put that down, you know. And um, I think that's kind of where, that's, that's kind of like where, you know, the whole term uh, writer's block comes from because, like, at some point I can't think of nothing like my mind is always all over the place and sometimes I just can't think of nothing to write down um you know I actually saw uh uh I actually saw an episode of Cool Hand Podcast and uh <laughs> I think I know where this is going you know where... <laughs> yeah bro like I saw an episode of Cool Hand Podcast you know like a couple months back and uh I watched all three parts actually uh props you know, to you because that was long <laughs> hey man look i love podcasts especially when i'm just sitting here cleaning and i don't like you know if i'm cleaning or 
doing whatever, you know, I just like to put podcasts on, specifically yours, you know, like, you Thank know, you. you got some. Yeah, no problem, bro. Um, but yeah, like, I was sitting there watching the Cool Hand Podcast and something that, you know, somebody that I pretty much respect musically, you know, crowded places, he kind of has a personality where, you know, he could be completely, like, blunt with you and not really care about how you feel because it's the actual truth or to his perspective it's the truth you know um you know he said something along the lines of you know writer's block is a myth and um i don't agree with that man like uh like it's a few things all right so out of everything he said i agree with probably 20 percent of what he said um I agree with, uh, he said something along the lines of, if you, I believe that if you can do it, or if I, if I can do it, then you can do it. And I 100% agree with that. Because, uh, you know, like, yeah, like, we're imperfect just like you are. You're imperfect just like I am. So, if I can do it, I believe that you can do it. And I fully agree with that. But then when he started saying stuff like, you know, writer's block is a myth. And if you do have writer or what you think is called writer's block, you're just lazy. That's not the case, man. Like, you know, I didn't really get offended when I heard. It. I was just like, dang, is that how you feel? <laughs> you know, Hey, I so, disagreed with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. I definitely saw that. Yeah. Like, I definitely saw that you agree uh, or you disagree with him. Um, and I saw the point that you were trying to make, too. So, like, when when. uh when I saw that, uh, when I saw that you were actually trying to combat what he was saying, I was like, "Yeah, get him, get him, get him, get him," you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But like, you know, he was saying stuff along the lines, and again, I agree with him. You know, like when it comes to a certain quality of music, sometimes your point can't really get put all the way across the way you want it to, you know. And that's only because some people can't see past the quality. Me, I'm one of those people that I don't care how the quality sounds. The quality could sound terrible. And as long as your writing, like, as long as your writing is up to par and I see the imagery that you're coming up with, I fully can commit to listening to it. You know, a lot of people can't do that, you know, and I think that's kind of where that's where my writing process comes in too because whenever I write stuff down I always try to always try to go to like different places in my mind you know like go to go to different places like I can literally relate two things two different things together and sometimes that does cause writer's block because you know you're constantly trying to think of these two things you're constantly thinking to the point that sometimes I burn myself out trying to think about it you know, so um, we definitely just got all the way off topic when you asked me that question. My bad. Uh, no, no, it's <laughs> it's all good. This is this is a free for all. We're having an open discussion. It, all gotcha. things, all things, lyrics, all things, creativity, all of that. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, so like back to like my writing process. Like, when it comes to me writing, I think I can't just sit there and you know, focus on one thing. And just like our conversation just now, you see how our conversation just started from one point and then it gradually just like went to something else. Like, that's how my mind constantly is, you know. Some some people have to say, you know, like, hey, bro, you're kind of getting off topic, you know. So that's why, that's why I always, you know, got to stop myself and be like, yeah, my bad. But, yeah, like my uh, my writing process is definitely different than, what you would say is average. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where my bars and metaphors come from. Because, you know, um, if if you can relate driving in a car to working out, that's pretty ADHD to me, you know? Like <laughs> like when I said in, a, I think it was Michael Blaine, yeah, it was Michael Blaine's song, Postseason. It was, um, they told me to stand off. My slogan is stand tall. I'm pulling up. See how that was an over your head bar. You're reaching. 
They said lyricism is dead. Wait, these rappers ain't doing squat. I told them it's leg day. You already lost. Wait. So like I'm literally comparing two different things and I think I came up with that one just by just by writing one thing down and coming back to it later. That's how every single one of my bars ever came. You know? Hey, back when I was uh, an active rapper, I had a similar a similar process. Like, I'd write some stuff. Maybe something came to me one day. And then maybe the next time I decided to sit down and focus on writing, mm -hmm. I'll pick back up where I left off the day before. And I'm right. going to address crowd of places real quick. <laughs> uh, because... <laughs> Uh, please get him get him cool now, man <laughs> now i've been trying to learn more i'm almost 30 and i'm an idiot so i've been trying to uh educate myself in different just different areas just reading a little bit more whatever and um there's something that i i'm not an expert on but i came across this thing called the dunning kruger effect now <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain it, um, not all the way, but something that you quoted Crowded Places on was him saying, if I can do it, then anybody can do it. Yeah. Now, in his mind, he may be saying that because, oh, who am I? I'm just I'm a I'm a, I'm just a guy. Right. So if I can do it, if I could get if I can, you know, whatever, all this writer's block stuff. Yeah. So a part of this, this little Dunning Kruger effect is someone who doesn't know that much may be a little more confident because they aren't aware of what they don't know. Right. So it, it, you might, if you ever heard somebody speak so confidently and they think they're right and you may know something um, more on the topic that they're speaking on, you're like, you know, you're wrong, right? You know, right. like, you know, you're incorrect, right. but because the, <laughs> they don't know enough of the topic to know that they're wrong. Right. And, on the flip side, you might be so good at something or you might know enough or in this case, the whole writer's block, it's not a thing to him that you underestimate your own ability and talent and you think that all people can do it or it's just very easy to get over. Right. So I think he's talk. He speaks to that latter part that I was just talking about, that it's not a thing to him, but he doesn't realize that it's a thing to others this right. is something that he excels at and because of that he doesn't realize that there is a level of difficulty so right. crowded places watch your mouth <laughs> oh man how did this turn into it <laughs> oh man yo nah like i like it, and like i said before like i definitely agree with the fact that he said you know if i can do it then you then you can do it you know but um again like you know when it comes to writing or just the whole process of making music a person can say stuff like that but it's like at the same time you got to understand like we're not in the same circumstances as you are you know I don't know if he has a family. I don't know if he has a wife. I don't know if he has, you know, like extra things that he has to look out for on a daily basis. But, you know, I definitely respect him as an artist. Definitely respect him as an artist. But yeah, he definitely is one of those artists that I look up to when it comes to like qual quality wise, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I listen to his music, I think, okay, I'm about to go on this journey of like sound effects that's literally what i imagine when i listen to his music you know but you know when it comes to like people like me who are strictly about bars i don't care how quality sounds that much if if i know that you're a musician and you're primarily you're primarily focused on quality i'll listen to it and i'll focus strictly on that and if and if I hear some bars, oh snap! Okay, I see what he did there, you know. But mm -hmm. for the most part, if you're a quote unquote like he always says lyrical miracle rapper, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I that's what I'm looking for. Specific, I'm not focused on the quality at all, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I always go back to like uh, 
when Lil Wayne like had everything on fire and back in the days of LimeWire and just leaks, you can just go on Google and type in an album or a, a rapper's name in this song and you could just find like an illegal version of it. Yeah. Um, we weren't worried about quality back then. You know, exactly. we, we, it was just about like, Oh, I got this and woo. woo and, right. But, um, but yeah, so <clears throat> that's a little bit on Tavon Casey and Tavon Casey's writing style. But, uh, in terms of what you like to hear, you, you like to hear the bars and you like to, you know, forget all the quality. Sometimes mm -hmm. the bars take, uh, take precedence over other things. So when it comes to like the art of rap, uh, who are some of the people when you think s about someone who really knows how to put together uh, lyrics, can tell stories, can put together uh, the metaphors, the similes, and, and add other aspects uh, into their art? Who are some of your fa favorites? Now, we talked about your favorite rappers in other um, mm -hmm. podcasts, right. but if those same ones fall in this category, please let me know. Okay. So, like... Um pretty much like people who who I pretty much look up to from a writing perspective or yes okay um pretty sure you know who this is a lot of people might not um um it's a guy he signed to TDE it, he goes by the name Daylight um mm -hmm. they Daylight is one of those artists that you have to pay attention to everything he's saying and if you miss one thing Possibly the whole bar of what he's saying probably won't make sense if you don't understand one part of what he's saying or one part of that in particular bar. So he's one of those artists that you really have to pay attention to whenever you listen to what he's saying on a microphone, you know. And that's kind of what I try to do. And I don't know what people look or I don't know how people look at my style of writing now because my style has definitely changed over the years. Like it used to be strictly, I'm the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. Like that's literally all it was. And then, you know, when 2017, 18 hit, I started talking more about conscious stuff. Like, and like, it wasn't even really too conscious. It was just common sense to me, you know, like, Everything that I was saying was literally common sense. Even up until Origami, the the EP I, I put out, um, Origami was literally just up, just about how money doesn't mean much, you know. Like it, it was literally just talking about that. So, um, it, I used to go from, you know, just not saying much at all, talking about how I'm a dope rapper and stuff like that, to, okay, let me see what else I can talk about let me see how I can put those two together and then that's when I started looking at those different artists like Daylight um, J. Cole Kendrick um, and I would even say Drake you know like it, and I'm, I'm not even a big fan of Drake no more like I used to be a huge fan of Drake but you know after a while you know when I found out he wasn't writing his own raps you know, that that kind of changed my whole perspective. But at the same time, you can kind of tell when Drake writes his own stuff and versus when he doesn't because it's two different Drakes, you know. Um, I, so, yeah, I'll put Drake in there. I would put... Um, yeah. That's like those, those are the ones, <laughs> those are the ones for now, the ones I can think of. All right. So you, so we, uh, you talked about daylight. I'm, I'm going to talk about daylight for a second <clears throat> because you kind of, you elaborated on what he does, uh, that makes him great. Uh, so on the flip side, so we have someone like daylight who I would say is like you said, you can't miss, you can't like, uh, turn your head away, so to speak. Like you turn your head away, you stop listening for one second, mm -hmm. you might miss something. Right. And, and the smallest thing that you miss could have helped put together everything else that he's saying. Now on the flip side, what do you think is whack? 
What? And 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 I don't mean and I don't mean like mumble rap, like people who are just playing around. Right. And, and this isn't like to diss anyone or anything, but can you think of rappers who just aren't there? Like somebody who's in the mainstream, whatever. Nobody who's gonna get somebody who won't get offended by watching this. Um, people who just don't cut it, who don't make the cut for you lyrically. Um, that's the thing, bro. I, I, I can't be like, like whenever I listen to somebody's stuff, I always try to point out what I like as opposed to, to what I don't like, you know, um, unless, unless I'm like, unless they ask me to be like super brutally honest about their stuff. But, you know, other than that, if I'm listening to something, I don't really try to focus on the negative things or what I think sounds bad. Because even if it sounds bad, chances are I'm going to I'm going to listen to it, you know, um, like just like just to give it a chance, because I know if I was in that position, I would want people to give my stuff a chance. So, mm -hmm. you know, even if somebody thinks my stuff is whack or something, I would want them to give me the same chance as I give them, you know, so. Um, but. With that being said, <laughs> uh, I'll probably say I'm not a big fan of E40. Uh, not not really a big fan at all, really. Uh, I like some features he did, but um, he's definitely one of those artists that I wouldn't go back and listen to unless it came on the radio or something. Because I think whenever he raps it, it, it's funny to me, you know, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound rap worthy. I mean, I don't want to say that. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like anything that I would like purposely listen to, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's probably E40. Um, people are going to kill me for this, bro. Oh man. Uh, I'm not, I've never been a fan of I've never been a fan of Lupe Fiasco. That's a shocker. Yeah. Like, I've I've never been a fan. Of, like, not to say that he's bad or anything, but, you know, when it comes to lyrical stuff, I like his flow. I like the way he cuts up his rhythm and stuff like that. But I've never really been, like, a fan that, like, would just go out of my way to listen to him. You know, not to say he's whack, but... Yeah, that like his his style just isn't for me though, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that one's a shocker just because he's uh, he is a lyrical person, and I think Lupe, um, what what year is it? Twenty twenty two. In twenty twenty two, I think I would call Lupe lyrical miracle. I would call him like lyrical miracle. You can't catch everything, and not that it's specifically complex but there's just some rappers like daylight i'm gonna use daylight i'm gonna go back to him because he's kind of um i call daylight in my mind i call him kind of arrogant because uh if you excel or you study something he, he's on like he's like real black african type stuff back yeah. to africa like yeah. he's real in in tap with uh, some some spiritual stuff on like that pan African side, something like that. I don't want to um, right. misdiagnose what he studies, but <clears throat> so he can say some real tectonic plates type stuff, and you won't get it. But like he, I, I think daylight's arrogant. But um, Lupe Fiasco, like he can, he also has like a niche. Like he fits into a pocket and he raps what he knows mm -hmm. um, may sound may sound um, very simple, but he raps what he knows and he talks about what he wants to talk about on specific topics. So I, I, I get it. I get that too. And that's the thing. Like, I don't, I wouldn't knock you for not liking this person or that person. Um, going back to E40 though. <clears throat> um, for me, for me, I, I'll, I'll speak, uh, on on how I feel about E40. I appreciate E40 for what he is. Right. I try to go back and listen to the different eras 
of different regions. Because that's the thing. I, I'm back in Pittsburgh, but we moved to Georgia in 2008. Mm-hmm. And before Georgia, I would have told you two, ta- 2 chains is trash. I would have told you Gucci was trash. I would have told you Waka Flocka was trash. And being in that environment down south, mm-hmm. being around people uh, who, who, was, who was getting grills and stuff, hearing it in the barber shops, seeing how people not, they nodded their head different down there. Yeah. So <clears throat> being in that environment, I found myself listening to Gucci. Love two chains to this day. Mm-hmm. Walk a flock, a flock of Veli. Um, that, that's one of my, my favorite albums to listen to when I'm making a long drive. So I, I began to appreciate what these rappers were. And it was from being in the environment where they came out of. Mm-hmm. Now I ain't never been, I've been to the West coast one time and I wasn't in the Bay area where, uh, E 40 and too short and all of them are from. But when I look at, like, I'll listen to some E 40 and I don't know all E 40s music and lyrically, you know, he, he, he'd be talking some stuff. He got, he got a song. Oh, yeah. That's not, there's not, there's a specific song that I like. That's not worth repeating, um, on the <laughs> podcast, but <clears throat> And it was made in the early nineties, but the, the message still applies to this day. And right. I'm like, E 40 was on point years ago. So the, like, I get what you're saying with the lyrical stuff. And that's another thing I think reach like being in a specific region also helps breed what you like. Right. Like I, I didn't like, uh, like playboy Cardi. I didn't like him in the beginning. He was weird. He was weird to me. Now, I, now I like playboy Cardi. I, I ain't even going to lie. It took, it took me a few years, but I like that young man. Yeah. But, um, and like, and, and like, I, I definitely agree with you when it comes to E40. I, I appreciate what he did for the culture. You know, like if it wasn't for E40, it wouldn't be no, you know, it probably won't be no schoolboy Q. It probably won't be no other rapper like that, that I like to listen to, you know? Um, so I definitely, I definitely appreciate what he did for the culture. But when it comes to like just lyrical stuff, like you know, I guess your style has to like has to resonate with me. Like I can respect what you're saying, and I like I might like your delivery and stuff. But if your style in general doesn't like resonate with me, then you know I just I'll listen to your stuff, but it won't be on some. Okay, I gotta go listen to it now. You know, mm-hmm. like I'll like if if it came on just now, like on the TV or something, I'll I'll, I'll listen to it. But you know, I'm not gonna be, you know, jumping all over the walls. Like, what did he just say? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I don't think. Um, I I wouldn't think. I don't. How do I want to word this? I don't know if people were like would be going to E40 to hear like the the hardest bars, like the most hard hitting right, right. bars and things like that. But uh, he definitely was in his own, definitely in his own lane. Like he's in a league of his own. Right. Yeah. Like I think so. Like when it comes to me, because my because my writing process is, well, you already told you how my writing process is, you know. But at the same time. Um, when when we talk about rap in general, um, I don't know, man. I, I like I just think I just think a little bit differently when it comes to certain people, certain certain uh, certain techniques of rap. Because you know it's it's like it's like ten to twenty different techniques of rap. So I don't want to say I've mastered like every single one of them because obviously I didn't. I think I only mastered like probably like two or three maybe four out of 20 you know so all the trolling that i was doing in the group chat you know a a couple months back for those of you that don't know you know i was basically trolling everybody in the group chat who made music and i was saying i'm the best rapper in our peer group you know and obviously i was just trolling um and look, but the funny thing though, like, let me tell tell you the uh, backstory to it. So, 
me and Michael Blaine was actually on the phone one day. And, you know, he was he was kind of expressing to me about how he feels like, you know, he's not really appreciated in our peer group when it comes to making music. You know, I like his music. You know, I, I'll sit and I'll listen to it. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think the same way as I do. So they kind of don't really, like, they'll see that he put something out and then I'll kind of just be like, oh, okay. They kind of won't give it a chance, you know. But, like, I was talking to him on the phone one day and he was telling me about um, how he feels like he's not really appreciated. And he was also saying that, you know, I, man, I don't know, maybe I should just take a break from, from rap after I put this project out. And this was like a couple months before he put out his, his album. Um, so I was on the phone with him one day. Oh, I was, I was, I was on the phone with him the next week. Cause I had came up with this plan in my head to like, kind of, without him knowing it was kind of to rile him up a little bit like yo you know i killed you on your own song right <laughs> you know like it was it was like yeah i killed you on, on your own song it's it's a um it's the song that i was actually quoting earlier post season um they, and they were talking about um well we need to see or we need to hear y'all's verses now so it's like we were kind of building up not really press because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too many people surrounding it, but just for people in the group chat, um, people were every day talking about, bro, like Khalil's talking crazy. Uh, Tavon, he, he's, he's saying he kills you on your own song. Mitchell's like, nah, we're going to see, we're going to see, you know? So I guess he kind of, like he kind of, you know, caught on to what I was doing and he kind of rode that train also. So, you know, the, and like, you notice the day after or the day he dropped his album, up until the the minute that he dropped his album, I was still talking crazy. But the moment he dropped his album, I was like, all right, my, my work here is done. I was trying to actually help him build up, like, more, build up more, uh, um, build more hype around it, you know? So, in a sense, I feel like Y'all were pulling a publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like, I think, uh, I think to a certain extent it worked, but you know, it, you know, it like, I'm, I'm not really the type of person that to just go out of my way and say, bro, I'm a better rapper than you, 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 and I killed you on your own song. You know, like I was just doing that just to, <laughs> I was just doing that just, just to get everybody, you know, like, Oh, Oh, word, word, bet. All right. No, I, I, you had me. I'm like, this dude, Tavon is competitive. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, and I I am competitive, bro. Uh, when I was younger, I used to play basketball. Um, and before music, basketball was all I wanted to do. Like, play. I went to I went to school, played basketball in the morning, skipped class midway through the day to play basketball, and then I played basketball again at the end of the day in health class. So. And then even after I would come home, sometimes I would play basketball because we had a court right beside our house. So, you know, it, you know, I was just constantly playing basketball. So I guess it just kind of made me a little bit more competitive, like a more competitive person than, than I intended to be, <laughs> you know. But um, when I started making music, um, I guess the competitiveness in basketball kind of transferred over. Because, like I said before, I, I was always talking about, oh, I'm the best rapper, I'm the best rapper. And till this day, that's still like a little habit that I have. Because it's like when somebody makes a freestyle, like when Crowded Places did the freestyle on Cool Hand Podcast. You remember when I commented, I was like, bro, like you should let me come to the Cool Hand Podcast and set the bar. Like that's just me being competitive, you know, like. I'm not saying that, that like he was bad or anything. Like I like some of the stuff that he was saying, but you know, like me as a rapper, I feel like, okay, like he did his thing. Now let me see if I can out outdo that. You know? Now obviously I don't know for sure if I was gonna be able to make it to 
to uh, Pittsburgh to do it. But, <laughs> but you know, like, it was just the thought that counted at the time. I was just kind of hyped to hear what he was saying, like, or how he was rapping. I'm like, oh, he's doing ciphers now. He's doing freestyles now. Okay, bet. Let me do it. You know, I want to do it. Let me do it. You know, it was just one of those things. But, yeah, man, I was just always, I was just always competitive, like, and till this day, basketball and music are the only two things that I've ever been competitive in. I've never been competitive in anything else. If I lose in anything else, it's like, oh, dang, you got me. You know, and then I openly admit, yep, he got me. He got me. But if it's music, I refuse to, like, say, okay, he beat me in this. Like, okay, he's a better rapper than me in this, you know. Um, I guess that's just, like, when it just comes to certain things, you know. All right, now let me get this straight, just to make sure I heard you right. So nobody is a better rapper than you, and this isn't a challenge to anyone. If um, <laughs> the, the the few people, the few the few people who are gonna watch this, this is not a challenge. I'm just trying to get get this straight. Nobody nobody could see you in your mind, and and you're supposed to be confident as a rapper, as a basketball player. You got to have the Mamba mentality, you know, the Jordan mentality that mm -hmm. you can't be beat. But right, right. I mean, like, like uh, when it comes to straight up, like if if we do, because like because like I said before, it's twenty different styles of rap, probably even more than that. So if we go into a specific pocket of rap, like if we grab like an old school '90s boom bap beat, no, I don't think nobody can rap as good as me. You know, but nobody can see you. Then on again, the, okay. you're supposed to have that. Right, mm -hmm. but like when it comes to so, like trap beats, oh, people can out rap me any day, you know. When it comes to certain like pockets in rap, yes, I think people can, people are better than me, people are better artists than me. But when, but if somebody calls me for a feature and they say, okay, I have a boom bap beat and I need you to go off on it, trust and believe, I'm going to go off on it and I'm going to try to get them on their own song, you know. <laughs> Got you. So, so don't call Tavon for a feature because he's gonna try to get over on you. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, like, like you know, like as an artist, you you're supposed to have like some type of confidence, and I don't consider Absolutely. what I just said like as arrogant, but like it's a difference between confident and arrogant. Um, arrogant, you know, you're just talking. You don't know what you're saying, but you're just talking. You're just talking. And then you don't care what nobody else says, even though that somebody else is speaking facts, but you're just speaking your truth and you're just like, okay, it is what it is. That's pretty much arrogant. Confidence is more so like, okay, I I definitely agree that you're better than me when it comes to, you know, singing, rapping, but like when it comes to a specific thing a specific part of it i think i got you here but you got me on this part too like that's like that's pretty much confidence to me you know that's not being arrogant you know all right so this is this is another thing that that that's kind of on the 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 e40 the e40 conversation <clears throat> mm -hmm. and um i, I want to touch on this real quick shout out to michael blaine because i did end up reviewing his project and um I tried to be fair with it. I tried to be fair. And, um, right. and this is the same thing with E40, um, where the, he's, where E40 has a specific sound. And, uh, and this is the thing, like, I hate to hear, you know, hopefully you weren't breaking some type of, uh, you know, bro code by <laughs> talking about the hmm. conversation that you had, but this is <clears throat> in all seriousness, because, um, like you never want to, like, I wouldn't want to hear somebody be like, unless like, they're just like, derogatory and just making all sorts of inflammatory statements in their music. It's like, you know, if this is your outlet, continue to do it. You know, like three right. people might watch this podcast. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm in it now. Like, like I'm in it. Like there's no turning back. Like I'm, I'm in this little podcast space now. Um, despite how much money I spend on it, I, I'm, I'm not going to be Joe Rogan. I'm not going to be Joe Budden. This is just my thing. You right. know what I'm talking about? And you don't have to love it. You don't, you might, one person might like it. The other person might hate it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in Michael Blaine's case, I, I think 
like I said before, he knows how to put these. He knows how to put stuff together. The presentation, um, the fi- the final product may not specifically be for me. It may not be for the guy next to me. But Tavon Casey appreciates it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I-, I appreciate certain aspects. I even say this about uh, crowded places music. S- like uh, when I actually read the lyrics, it hits deeper. When it comes across on the airways, when I'm listening to it, some t- like the, the mm-hmm. message isn't getting across. It's a lot deeper when I actually read the lyrics, which is why I appreciate when artists put their lyrics on these streaming platforms. Right. Um, listening to Michael Blaine's music, <clears throat> he's he's putting bars together. The, the way it came across to me, um, just not me, not for me, but I, I would never want anybody to... Uh, Taking a break is one thing, but just being discouraged from uh, a lack of appreciation, like this is your thing, like you're the man, like you, you're, you're you, like keep doing your thing right. because you know what you're doing and woo, woo, woo. So shout out to, uh, shout out to Michael Blaine and, and, and all, and all the people who are, who are doing this. Yeah. Like, and like, again, like I, I didn't say what I said earlier to like, kind of like, to kind of like, kind of like disregard him as an artist, but like. You know, that's just kind of how he was feeling at the time, you know. And I kept trying to tell him, bro, like, you got something. Like, you like you don't got to take a break. You know, all you got to do is just keep trying. Just keep trying. Um, you know, and when it comes to writing, I do think, writing-wise, I feel like he definitely has a dope pen. He definitely has one of the best pen. Like, if you consider what he writes down and how he writes it, his delivery might not be for you. His, like, just like you said, the final product might not be for you. But, like, when it comes to, like, writing, I do feel like Michael Blaine does have, like, one of the best, like, actual writing styles and pens in in our peer group, you know. But a lot of people are going to disagree. A lot of people are going to agree. You know, I, I don't know. But that's just how I feel, you know, as an artist. Um, There's a certain thing... Um, and th- and I give Drake a lot of credit for this. Um, even uh, there's a podcast I was thinking about doing is uh, it wouldn't be till down the line. I'm backed up with podcast <clears throat> and ideas at this point, stuff I need to edit. But um, I wouldn't be mad if anybody had Drake in their top five, even top three. Even if he was somebody's favorite rapper, I would right. give that to them. Um, there's the whole ghostwriting thing. Um, that after a while, when you think about it, it actually was a good idea. Uh, and I, and I'll tell you why. (laughs) So if you listen to Drake, when he came out with room for improvement, comeback season, um, you have the so far gone's when he started like really getting hot. He had the so far gone EP. If you're reading this, unless yeah. So, and by that time he was like on, he was Drake, but <clears throat> when you listen to the old stuff now, um, and I'll never know this, but unless he had somebody like writing his bars when he was a baby, when he was young, 20 year old Drake, then I don't like, he proved himself a long time ago that he can rap. Oh yeah. And yeah. he, and he got on and this is the thing Drake got on, but then when you get in the rap game, now you're in a now you're it's business decisions because there's plenty of people who are in the game now who can't rap worth worth a lick but they're on they're popular they have money behind them marketing this that and they know how to brand themselves so right. okay drake you're on top nobody stays on top forever wayne had his moments jay was on top of the game kanye continues to stay relevant although his music quality has dropped off in my opinion he's still one of my favorite he's still my favorite artist of all time not my favorite rapper but getting a getting getting a ghost writer or somebody to write some write a couple bars something that may be catchy at this point it's a longevity game it's how do i stay on top i I know how to rap cool like i proved that a long time ago now I'm just going to maintain my relevancy. That's my argument for Drake as not that he needs me to argue for him, but that's like my true take on Drake. Um, I think he's somebody who knows how to put together a song and be a lightweight lyricist while also keeping you entertained. 
And this is another right. thing when it comes to songwriting. I don't like for me, if I want to hear a song that I want to keep listening to over and over again, it's not, I'm not trying to have a headache by the time I'm done listening to the song. Like we were talking about daylight and I'm going to use him as an example again. And there's a reason why daylight isn't on everybody's radar. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Bar after bar, after bar, after bar, after bar, after bar. You get tired of that. Okay, boom. Oh, that was crazy. Oh, that was crazy. Oh, that was crazy. Okay, when am I going to start enjoying myself? Like, throw something <laughs> funny in there. Like, one of the reasons why we liked Wayne was because he could rap. But, like, some of some of the stuff that he came up with was, like, ridiculous. And, like, like I, I chuckled at it. Like, <laughs> some of the stuff Drake comes up with is hard. But at the same time, like, it's, it's so simple. And people take simplicity for uh, as, like, as if it's a weakness, but you hear the term, keep it simple, stupid. Like when something mm-hmm. simple, plain and digestible, I think that's what makes a, also a good songwriter versus, you know, super lyrical miracle. Da da da. I pull this from the sky and put this together. And that makes this like, all right, cool. Like, you know how to, like, you thought real hard about that, <laughs> but what else do you got? <laughs> I'm, t- I'm dead. Sick. Like I have, like, I, I think about as a retired rapper and a retired undefeated battle rapper, 53 and 0, never lost. Oh, Lord. All right, Cassidy. I, I, I never lost. I think about, I think about these things. I, I really like think about the stuff that uh, people talk about and the music that I consume. But um, that's, my, that's my sermon on, yeah, on yeah. Drake, and that's a big thing. Yeah. All right, so... I'm going to ask you this. Like, how do you feel about KD? Who? The basketball player, Kevin Durant. Great. Like, he's, right. he's uh, as a basketball player, he could, he could do everything. All as right. a basketball player. Um, LeBron has a leg up on him when it comes to, like, driving. Okay, aggressiveness. He has – LeBron has more uh, weight on him. Maybe Kobe had a better post-up game. But um, Kevin Durant, he's he has the height like Dirk Nowinski. He could rebound. I, I think if he wanted to, if he wanted to focus on rebounding, he could because he has the height. Maybe not the uh, the athleticism as a big – or something like that. But he still knows how to get to the lane. As lanky as Kevin Durant is, he can still finesse his way to the basket and not get injured. Um, so I don't know if that's if that's where I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm gonna find out when I stop talking. Boom. I mean, all right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So, you see where this ADD goes? You know, it goes from one thing to another, but it compares too. Where I'm going with this is Kevin Durant is my favorite basketball player, like in general. For this era, Kevin Durant has always been my favorite basketball player. Drake has has been one of my favorite rappers in the past. Drake proved that he can rap. Kevin Durant proved that he can play basketball. Kevin Durant or Drake had gotten a ghostwriter to write some of his stuff. That's not fair in some people's eyes. Kevin Durant joined a team, Golden State Warriors, got himself two championships. That's not fair in some people's eyes. You know? So it's like, when we talk about, like, uh, yeah, like, he proved that he can rap, like, a long time ago. But it's like, you got to stay consistent. Like for me, it's all about consistency. If you can consistently write your own stuff and then at the same time be, be where you want to be. Like if like, so the argument can be made that if Drake didn't get that ghostwriter or Quincy or whatever his name was, or no, actually your, (laughs) your name is wait, so your name is Quincy, right? All right. Well, yeah, I'm sorry about no, that. No, it's Quentin. But, uh, My name is Quentin. Oh, oh, I got you, got you. Uh, that's that's sad, bro. I knew you for a while, and I didn't even know your actual name. But uh, that's sad, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, so when we talk about 
Drake, people like to say that, you know, the Ghost Rider stuff, that doesn't matter. But it's like they kind of look at KD, and then KD technically did the same thing in his profession that Drake did in his profession. You know, he joined he joined an uh, unbeatable team already, and then he just, like, literally went up from there. And Drake kind of did... Drake kind of did his thing and it kind of made people look at him in a certain way too. So like, you see where I'm pretty much going with that? Like, I see where you're going with it. At the same time, <clears throat> Drake helped other people. write. That's another thing. Yeah. Like we can't, he said that in his, uh, in his disc record to push a T that how are you going to come at me about writing about having somebody help me out with some bars but I'm writing for your for your big homie, your big homie Kanye. Go look at the writing credits on Thirty Hours. From the first time I heard that song, I'm like, "That's a Drake," and everybody is aware that Kanye has ghost writers. So right. the moment I heard that song, I'm like, "This is Drake," and then I come to find out it was Drake. Forget that. Forget all that. Like, and everybody like has their, I know that I may be an outlier and I'm not saying Drake is the best rapper of all time or this and that. But if somebody was to tell me that they put him in his top five or even, you know, top three might be his fa their favorite rapper. I can, I can make a case for Drake and I can make a case against Drake. Yeah. Uh, but right now I'm, I, I personally can make a case for Drake. If you wanted, if you want to throw me on a debate team, I can argue down why Drake isn't the best. But yeah, my personal yeah. opinion is, um, the ghost writing isn't as big as it was made out to be in 2016. Like it was a big deal in 2016 and I understand why, but, um, yeah. And, and Drake is LeBron. If we want to compare <laughs> basketball players. <laughs> so like, I would say, I would say I definitely agree with you on that because, uh, you know, back in 2016, that definitely mattered. Um, you know, when did KD join the Warriors? Uh, when was the first year that he joined the Warriors? Oh, man. Was it 16 or 17? Might have been 17. So KD joined the Warriors probably back in, like, 2016. 20, yeah, like just like you said, 2016, 2017. So I think 16. if – if uh, Drake, I see what everybody says. Oh well, like it didn't, or it doesn't matter now. Back then, it mattered. You know, people. The same argument could be made with uh, KD. You know, like if if he would have never joined, if if he would have never joined the Warriors, where would his career be? Would he still be with OKC? I doubt it. But a lot of people would make that argument. Oh, he would have won a ring with OKC. But uh, yeah, like. I think if somebody can't write their own stuff all the time, they can't. I wouldn't put them in the category of best rapper of all time. Like, if I found out that Rakim didn't write his own stuff, I'd be like, oh, man, that kind of just tainted your legacy a little bit, you know? Because it's like, especially for back then, back, back in the 80s and 90s, you had to write your own stuff, you know? Um... And like I said, it, the same thing goes goes for Easy E. Like when it comes to Easy E, the, uh, Dr. Dre was writing his stuff for him when he first came out. I don't know if it was like later on in his career too, but like when he first started rapping, like he was writing all the Easy E stuff. Um, so that kind of like it doesn't taint his career because you know I don't I don't know a single top ten list that has Easy E in it you know so i don't think that that would like taint his career but for somebody to say that drake is a top 10 rapper they i wouldn't say that but i see why people would say that because drake back in the day he's one of the greatest rappers of all time you know if especially if he would have kept that up until now and like he could still rap the way he used to but you know he yeah i definitely wouldn't put him in my top five, possibly top 15, top 20, but I wouldn't put him in top 10, you know? Now, in your opinion, this is the big one. What makes a good rapper? 
what makes a good rapper. Um, I think what makes a good rapper is the seriousness, like like taking taking a craft serious. That's number one, because you know you don't got to be the most technical rapper to 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 be a great rapper. Because you know if if you take the craft serious, you can rap for about 15, 20 years, and your name is going to automatically appear on those top tier rappers because you've been doing it for a long time and people still rock with your stuff over the years you know uh so i think it all starts with like it all starts with consistency and also and and by consistency i don't mean like constantly putting out project after project after project like you don't got to put out a project every single year but by consistency i mean like quality wise like what are you putting out that's better or just as good as you put out last time, you know? Um, so consistency, uh, you know, longevity, like I said, and I would say, I, I would say skill because anybody can be a talented rapper, but skill is where you sharpen your tools. Like, you know, like when I first started rapping, I was just a talented rapper. I wasn't a good artist. I was just a talented rapper. Um, and then as time went on, I kind of just sharpened my tools into like what I consider to be a, to what I can see or to what I consider a, a higher level than what I ever was. Like right now, I feel like pen wise I'm sharper than ever you know I might not be able to write a verse in two minutes but you know when I sit down and I write a complete verse and I feel like it is completed I feel like it's sharper than, than ever I feel like I haven't wrote my best verse yet but I do feel like it, it is coming though there you have it that's what that that's uh Tavon Tavon Casey's take on what makes a good rapper um <clears throat> thank you for coming on the show this is the first um the first interview or not interview or episode we're having virtually in a long time uh yeah. so i appreciate you for coming on hopefully this footage looks okay that yeah. good enough for us to put out but um <clears throat> any last yeah, words man, i hope so i hope so man like it was a good convo i think uh yeah and and my bad. Like I said, my like my mind goes from different place from one place to another. So if I was kind of confusing you a little bit, you know, with the whole Drake and KD comparison, like, yeah, like no, that was pretty. It much made the sense. Whole, I got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, it made sense. Sorry if I confused so, um, any of you uh, listeners. No, I, I think I think I think people will get it. I think people will get it. I don't think. Um, I think you're good. I think you're you're. Your your message is interpreted well. <clears throat> oh, I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. You know, I'm a but, rapper, um, so you know I gotta, yeah. gotta speak these words fluently. Yeah, you know these rappers, y'all. They always gotta speak in rapper code, <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking similes. But uh yeah, this is the Cool Hand Podcast. Tavon Casey is in the building once again. This is the three peat for him. Um so thank you. I will be glad to have you back on in the future. Uh, this is the Cool Hand Podcast. Shop Valare Toro, by the way. You can see this uh, Ken Griffey shirt in the background. Um, yeah, only I was wore looking that at once. that earlier. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Valare Toro um, and, and the guys who are running that. But shop Valare Toro. Valare Toro on the hat. Valare Toro on the shirt. This is the Cool Hand Podcast. Something you got to deal with. Easy. <laughs>